Welcome back, everybody, to the Tennessee Titans franchise. We are one of the two last unbeaten teams in the NFL. And we've got ourselves an outstanding matchup for this episode with two of the best young quarterbacks in the NFL, Kerry Farrell and Brian Nava. These teams are 5-0 and 4-1. And but there's a little curveball thrown our way this evening with Derrick Henry, inactive. He had a very busy game last week against the Cowboys and now on a short week. He's not going to be in action tonight. Needing a little extra time to rest up. He's 32 years old now and we're going to count on our younger running backs this week to carry the load. We have Rashad Polite and his dynamic speed along with second year running back Manny Warner. It's just the two man backfield for this game. Manny had 12 carries last week against the Cowboys in that rain-soaked mess. He's done a really good job for us this year, and he's continued to get better, I feel, with each game. 171 yards this year. He had a long 60-plus yard touchdown just two games ago, and now he's going to get a start alongside Rashad Polite. It'll be a pretty simple approach, though. Manny's going to get the carries that would have otherwise gone to Derrick Henry. But of course, we're not counting on the running game to do all the work with the improvements we've seen in the passing game. Brian Nava's off to a strong start in his second season, and he's got a little extra help this week with the return of wide receiver Trayvon Randolph. Last year's AFC Offensive Rookie of the Year, he's only played a game and a half. Had an outstanding week one with three touchdowns against Cincinnati and hasn't played since the second half of week two. But we would not be undefeated right now if not for the play of our defense. Over their last three games, they're allowing just 15.6 points per game. And they'll have their hands full in this one. Kerry Farrell was the NFC Offensive Rookie of the Year last season after being a second round pick and proving that he should have been a first bringing the Commanders to a Super Bowl in his rookie season with 40 touchdowns and already 16 this year with no interceptions. When he looks to throw the football, his number one target is Terry McLaurin. And defensively, this is one of the best front fours we're going to see all season. And now we don't have our top running back. We're going to have to make sure we're smart with our passing game to keep those turnovers and sacks from becoming a problem. But we're 5-0 playing the best football we have in this franchise. And it's time, everybody, to get Week 6 underway in Washington. Jahan Dotson on the return across the 20, jukes his way across the 25, and is stopped at the 28. And here comes Kerry Farrell, second-year quarterback out of Baylor. We did consider him two drafts ago and, of course, selected Brian Nava instead. From the 28th, they open with a run, and Antonio Gibson picks up a few. Here's the injury report for Tennessee. We're missing Derrick Henry, Nate Davis, and Jamel Dean got hurt last week. We have Daxton Hill in the slot now taking over that role. Passes Khan on second down. It will move the sticks. And that's the rookie, Tremaine Barlow. Commanders brought out to the 40-yard line. It's a fake on first down and caught by McLaurin downfield. Rocked by Harrison at the 31, but he holds on for a big gain of 29 yards. You've got to be careful if you're going to press him at the line. He's got one of the best releases in the game. Instant scoring chance. Gibson up the middle, runs into Divine Diablo and his buddy Connor Knox. Bunch formation for Washington as they isolate Terry. Third and six. Carey throws, and it's caught by McLaurin. Moving the sticks down at the 15. With all this talent, Washington spreads the field on second down. It's out quick, and it's almost picked by Christian Fulton. Third down now. They can move the sticks by getting to the four. Farrell. Dumps it off for Gibson, and he's taken down by Isaiah Simmons as the drive ends. This is a stingy defense, hard to get touchdowns on them recently. And now Brian Nava takes the field. No Derrick Henry this week, but back in, number 84, Trayvon Randolph. Opening in the air on first down. Nava gets hit, but finds Randolph, and he holds on at the 48. 
And it looks like now Chris Wimbley is favoring his back, and he's going to exit. So now you have the rookie Jeremy Austin in the game for the first time. Running right with Manny Warner, it's a gain of four. Manny looked really good against Dallas last week. I feel like he's ready for this. Third down, Nava across the middle and caught by Sal Sexton for the first down. Manny in the game, it's second and ten. Getting it away, pass hauled in by Bynes, who also had some great moments in the absence of Trayvon Randolph. Third down with time, it's launched, and Randolph can't come down with it. Well covered, and that'll bring on the field goal team. A little bit less win than last week as Matt Gay hits this one through the uprights, and we're all tied, three apiece. Some good moments for the offenses on those two opening possessions. Take two, Washington. Farrell, comfortable in the pocket, finds McLaurin. Hammered by Simmons at the 50. Already McLaurin making plays against Caleb Farley. First and 10 for Washington. It's behind the receiver, but complete to Jacoby Myers. Empty again. They got Gibson slot left, a great receiving back. Farrell, McLaurin caught inside the 30. This is going to be a problem. McLaurin last year had a career high 1,412 receiving yards. First and 10, wide open, complete, and Knox again with a weak tackle attempt. He had one of those a week ago. Javante Parker sets him up three yards out now for Washington. Gibson carries and dives on in for the touchdown. Commanders take the lead. If I've learned anything after these two possessions, it's that you cannot let Farrell and McLaurin get going. 10-3 Commanders still here in the first quarter. Manny is the running back on first down, and he gets dumped for a loss by Chase Young. So quick off the ball, using those skills to make a play against the run. Third and long, Nava steps up away from the rush. He hasn't crossed the line. Heaving and wide open, it's Randolph. Inside the 30. Brian Nava made sure not to pass the line. You had two receivers down there and only one defender. And Nava's got the strong arm to throw him to the open spot. 50 yards on the connection. Tennessee set up now. Polite on the carry. Hit down after a short gain. Third down and nine for Tennessee. It's a four-man rush and wide open is Randolph. He's got the first down. You can tell how excited we are to have him back in the lineup. Offset eye now on second down. It's a house blitz, and Nava gets it away to Rouse for the touchdown. They left him all by himself, and it's time for the fullback to celebrate. The aggressiveness backfires against Washington, and for Leonard Rouse, it's his third career touchdown. They have all been receiving. Ten apiece. Great game here in week six as Gibson is dumped for a loss by Rashawn Gary. Not much on the ground for Washington. Farrell second down. Gary got him again. A sack this time. Gary has been unbelievable these last two years. A quick three and out for Washington. And now Christian Parker awaiting from the 32. And he's looking to cross the field, and he's got the edge. Parker across the 50, hustles to the 40, and is run out at the 36 of Washington. Short field for Tennessee as they look to retake the lead. Fine slot right. Manny on the carry. And we haven't gotten much of a running game established ourselves. From the 35, six protecting. Nava throws, caught. Sexton inside the 20. Nava looks really comfortable. The protection continues to hold up. Wimbley is back in the game, by the way, as it's a bubble now out to Bynes, and he got rocked after a short gain. I form now as Rouse leads the way, and Warner goes down after a short pickup. I don't know about running in these situations. A full two to go, and Polite picks it up. Good blocking on that left side creates first and goal. 
Two receivers in the game. Nava throws it outside, and Sexton walks in for the score. Great time to break out an RPO, and that was a clear lane for Sal Sexton to walk on in and give Tennessee back the lead. There it is one more time. They're creating wide open looks for Nava here in the red zone. They're doing something right. Back and forth we go in the first half. Carey Farrell trying to answer. Time to throw. It runs out on him, and he finds Gibson, and he's able to muscle his way through contact and get a first down. Sloppy play there by the Tennessee defense. They set up a screen now for Antonio Gibson, and this time Simmons makes the tackle. Much better attempt. They got Dotson on the inside. Third and five. Another screen floated to Gibson. And this time the sideline stops him. And it's fourth down. They'll bring on the field goal team now to try and close the gap a little. And from 52, the kick is good from George Wells. And it's 17-13. Two minutes left to go in the first half. Here's Nava to start the drive. Wants polite, and he's covered well. Short gain. Wide to the left, you got Trayvon Randolph. Always have to watch where he's at. He makes the catch on second down and is brought down around the 45-yard line. A very busy opening halfback for Trayvon Randolph. Now first down, and Nava sends it downfield. He wants him, and it's through his hands. That could have been six for Randolph. Instead, second down. Caught Sexton, running room. Out of bounds at the 37. With all these receivers healthy, this looks unstoppable. 37 seconds on the clock, protected perfectly. Caught by Abbott this time. And set up once again in the red zone. And they've done a really good job drawing up stuff already. First and 10, time to throw to the end zone and through the hands of Abbott. And he really should have had it. 28 seconds now, second and 10. Good protection and short. Flag down and not much on the game for Emmanuel Abbott. And it's going to be against Tennessee for a hold. Backing up here for second down and 20. And six protecting, keeping Nava clean as Sexton makes the catch. And picks up 17. 10 yards away, you can still go for the first down here. Nava steps up and is sacked. Had Sexton there underneath, didn't see him. And that's going to end the first half. Three on the board for Tennessee makes it a 20-13 game. And with the offense now leaning more on the pass, the inverse of what we saw last week, the results are looking very good. The protection for Nava has been outstanding, and guys are just consistently getting open. This is just the first game of the week, so we don't have any other updates here, but very interested in what happens in that Colts and Bengals game. Well, let's get on to this second half now. We've seen some great things out of these two offenses, and Trayvon Randolph is already over 100 yards. Two tight ends on the field. It's a first down play action. And Nava's going to take a shot. Randolph makes the catch. Down at the 12 of Washington. How can you not want to come out of halftime and throw it 60 yards downfield to this guy? It is 63 officially on this reception. He is uncoverable. It's an instant red zone trip. Warner cuts back and makes his way to the four. We'll see if the running game starts to become more of a factor. Third down for Nava. Back to pass. Fires back in the end zone for the touchdown. Number two for Sal Sexton, giving him five on the season. That's more than he had in the previous two years combined, where he only had four. And it's a 27-13 game, the first two-score advantage this game has seen, putting some pressure on Farrell. And so is Riddick, oddly enough. Pass caught by Terry McLaurin, gain of eight. Five grabs now for McLaurin. 
third down. It's Gibson now, and he finds the space out to the 37. Empty now for Farrell, second and four. Pressure getting through. Loads up for McLaurin. Can't make the catch. Better defended that time by Farley. Receivers all in tight. Blitz sent. Farrell trying to dodge it. And he throws incomplete. Connor Knox applied the pressure. And the ball goes back to Tennessee. In control here on the road. Here is Polite with a strong run. Gain of six. Bynes left. Randolph right. Second down. Nava off his back foot, heaves it, and it's caught by Polite, and he'll take it all the way. Touchdown. 74 yards now. Longer than the pass to Randolph on the opening drive of the second half. One on one, a wheel route with one of the speediest running backs in the game. Even with this loaded front four, Nava still has time to throw it deep. And it's 34 to 13. Farrell's taken down for a big loss by Riddick. Washington, what has happened? Down 21 here in the third. Needing eight across the middle and a short one to Gibson that will not get the first down. Washington is in some trouble as Tennessee has opened up their lead here in the third quarter. And now Warner finds the lane and picks up nine. It's his best run. We'd love to get the running game established now as Warner takes it left, coughs up the football, and Washington has it. That is a big takeaway for them. They desperately needed this if they want to get back in the game. They're 20 yards away after Warner's second fumble of the season and a gain of seven for Gibson. Going empty third and two. Farrell throws it quick, hauled in, and down to the one. Almost scoring is the tight end, Angelo Simmons. From the one, it's a keeper, and diving into Simmons, Farrell scores. Not a very necessary play there, and it looks like Hayden Jean Charles is trying to argue that he led with the crown of his helmet, but there is no penalty. And it's now a two possession game. Three minutes to go on the third. Nava back to pass, slings it out to Bynes. He had Randolph over the middle if he wanted them. Third down. It's a draw given to Polite, and he does not get it. Deron Payne with the stop. And Washington gets it back quickly. Looking for momentum here in the third. A shot for Gibson off his hands. Not able to get too many deep balls to this point. A fake now, and Riddick's applying the pressure and sacks Farrell way back at the 18. We've gotten just enough pressure on Carey Farrell. Third and 21. Launches! Broken up! Isaiah Simmons with great defense. Tennessee about to take this one into the fourth quarter, and Warner continues to... Work with very little room. Washington wants the three and out. Nava fires complete. Emmanuel Abbott first down. Brian Nava, 370 plus yards now. Setting up a screen. Rashad Palai gets to the outside. Now works back to the middle and is stopped. There's eight. Gives them a chance on third down. Sterling Shepard now in the game. Nava throws and got it to Bynes. And it's fourth down. Offense stays in. Two tight ends. Polite carries. Gets it with a big block delivered by Lakin Tomlinson. First down, Tennessee. Closing in on field goal range. And there's that throw to Sexton again. Stiff arms the first man and gets the first down. Washington has had no answer on this specific play. These RPOs are nasty. 9.30 left to go. Polite takes it left and is down near the first down and gets a favorable spot. Warner back in the game with Rouse as well. Off play action. Nava fires. Caught by Bynes. Down to the five. 18 on the catch. Tennessee looking for the big three score advantage. Counter. 
Warner, he's in for the touchdown. I believe we are watching what may be the best offense in the NFL this season. They've dropped 40 on Washington. And they're just minutes away from a 6-0 start to the season. A long way to go for Washington. It's Gibson on the screen, and he does not get far. And with every play like that, you're losing valuable time. Third and six. Farrell to the sideline, and a good job staying aware of it by Gibson. We've gone inside six minutes now. Good protection, complete to Angelo Simmons. Tennessee will give you that throw as many times as you want it here. From the 45, out to Gibson, and again, not much on the gain, stopped in bounds. That's all Tennessee cares about at this point. Soft zone, give him the middle. Little shovel pass now to Simmons, and it's the same thing. So Farrow and the offense are getting downfield, but at a snail's pace. Third and three. Fires it in there, it's caught. Down to the 29. Farrell's got to get aggressive at this point. It's first down, and he's intercepted. Christian Fulton has ended this one. His third interception of the season, and it's the first thrown by Kerry Farrell all year. What a performance by Tennessee. We have been challenged every week with something new. Last week, it was the rain against Dallas. This week, it's a short week without Derrick Henry going on the road. And Tennessee is minutes away from going to 6-0 as Manny Warner will close this out. Not the best performance for him, but able to finish strong. One final carry. He's brought down and time runs out. A 6-0 start for our Tennessee Titans. I never imagined we would start this strong, but I knew the pieces were in place for us to be a very good team this year. The offensive line was kind of the last piece of the puzzle, and then you had to let the receivers and Brian Nava develop just enough, and Nava just had his masterpiece of a showing. 418 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. That's basically a perfect game equivalent here in the NFL. That was a lot of fun. We've been drafting all these playmakers all series and wondering when would it all come together. It truly can't until the offensive line is in place. But things are about to get very scary. Rashawn Gary actually achieved this superstar X-Factor breakout. I totally forgot about this, but we did well against the run, and he had a really good game at the same time. Rashawn Gary is now an X-Factor. He was already this good without it. Good luck, right tackles. You're gonna need it. We win on the short week, so this scenario is a win. Derrick Henry, inactive, still ends up wearing his uniform, and we get 2,500 experience for everybody and a morale boost. The Rashad Polite scenario was unfortunate. I wish that had gone to Manny Warner, but we weren't going to achieve that anyway. I wish they would have factored in his long receiving touchdown, though. Today we had Trayvon Randolph come back, and I think it's pretty safe to say on this channel he is the best receiver that we've ever had. I think that he's one of the most unique players we'll ever have in this universe, period. And we just continue upgrading these young guys. It's so big to complete these scenarios. Things can snowball in such a good way for a team like this. 6-0. Brian Nava, no interceptions this week. Now 13 touchdowns to 4 picks and only sacked 15 times in 6 weeks. I could not get over how well the offensive line played today. There are times where he gets hit and then, you know, the ball is thrown just as that's happening, but we're given just enough time to make throws that we couldn't have dreamed of in the past. It allows Trayvon Randolph to put up some unbelievable numbers. I talked about this earlier. Sal Sexton's five touchdowns creates a huge bounce back for him. 
Next week, we defend our undefeated record against the Pittsburgh Steelers in the final game before the trade deadline. Of course, with Pittsburgh, you have defensive playmakers. At this point, you know, I have to worry about not getting overconfident just because we've played so well against good teams. Just got to keep it up. And I think if we play our game, I don't think that uh, we're going to have too many problems with teams that don't have uh, the same level of firepower on offense. There's now only one winless team in the NFL, but two undefeated. And the top four teams in the league right now are all in the AFC. This conference is just superior. And we've put our team at the very top of it to this point. Brian Nava is the AFC Offensive Player of the Week. And I don't think we'll see a better stat line than that one. The touchdown leader in the NFL is Josh Allen with 19. And thankfully, Brian Nava is nowhere near the interception leaders yet. Jonathan Taylor is the rushing leader at 815 yards. And receiving is interesting. Justin Jefferson leads in yards. Now, Trayvon Randolph has missed a fair amount of time. But if we just look at yards per game, he is number one. And that includes the game where he left injured and had under 40 yards. Despite missing a month, I think he can still put up some incredible stats. I love this team, and I, I really am glad that we finally got into this point. And I'm hoping you're all excited about the direction this team is finally headed in. I also wanted to highlight Grant Richardson, who was he the first pick of the entire series? Or he was one of the first picks, and he's uh, become one of the better edge rushers in the NFL. Very uh, impactful player for the Seattle Seahawks. Already 10 and a half sacks. And we haven't even hit the deadline yet. But next time, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers trying to move to 7-0. and And that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you all for watching. Staying patient in this series. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the episode. Subscribe to the channel. And next episode, I hope we can continue to put on this show. Have a great day. See you next time.